Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of Straight Talk Whiskey. I'm Nick, as always, and this is episode number 41, and a second part to our mini-series on Ardbeg Isla Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. Now, last week we went over the Ardbeg 10-year-old, which, if you saw the review, or if you've had it before, is just a phenomenal, whoop, oh, almost lost it, phenomenal scotch, especially for the price, and especially for what you're getting in the glass. Now, unlike most whiskeys out there, it's bottled at 46% ABV, right? Their standard entry line whiskey is right at 46. So you already have to give them uh, compliments for doing that because most people don't. And so they, you know, believe in the quality of their spirit and it has a huge following as, you know, once new versions, new variations, expressions come out, people go crazy over them and they're very limited and people try to rush to get those. So we did did the 10 year, non show filtered. I, I will also add that um, to all of these. Now, like I said last week, if you didn't watch last week, basically just got the exploration pack that I found at my local liquor store owner just happened to, uh, we were talking, and I was just looking around, you know, asking if he had anything new, that sort of thing, and he said that he had this package, which is really nice for the price. You're paying just as much, basically, for the Ardbeg 10-year-old, except that they throw in the, um, I think it's 50, yeah, 50 milliliters of each expression here, so the Cory Vrecken and the Ugadal. Ugadal is what we're going to be reviewing today. Now this is basically taking the traditional Ardbeg 10 year old, but also maturing it in X sherry casks. So you already have a superb whiskey with this huge, wide ranging flavor profile, flavor palette, and marrying that with the sherry, which can only be even better. So. I will add, though, that this is bottled at a whopping 54.2% ABV. Now, for those of you playing along at home and doing the math, that is a 108.4 proof. That is pretty up there. That is, that is way beyond what you normally get with, say, bourbon, stuff like that. And I'll just use that as, as an example because most of that is, you know, watered down to 40%. ABV. So, and I will say that the Cory Vrecken that we're going to review next week is bottled at 57.1%. So, already, you know, Ardbeg, in my mind, is, is way up there on the list. Just because you're paying, yes, you are going to be paying $80, $90, perhaps, in that area, you know, fluctuation, obviously, depends on where you get it. With these two expressions, this is obviously a little bit less. I've seen it hovering around mid, low to mid fifty um, dollars for the U.S. market. So it depends where you are in taxes and that sort of thing. But those are roughly the price points that you're going to pay for it. But that is equated to other scotches, in particular, out there at the same price point with um, just either no age statements. 40% ABV, or they say that it's been aged in 400 different types of casks or something like that, or so-and-so picked it out, you know, hand-selected or a small batch or something like that, and they basically use labeling and that sort of thing to bump it up. Here, what you get with the art bag is the quality of the whiskey that is basically why the price is what it is, and, you know, the proof being such, you could get a lot out of it. So, let's pour a little bit. So we still got a single malt scotch whiskey here. I got to save this puppy here. That's good for probably one or one and a half more glasses, depending on how we go. But I will definitely be adding some water. So you already know about the water, how it's helpful. How you want usually some filtered water, room temperature, that sort of thing, right? The cold 
bitter, you know, bitter cold water, um, close to freezing, will numb some of the flavors and sort of aromas that you get with it. So, what we don't know is the age of this, but, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world, obviously. So what I'm getting is the traditional Ard Beg sort of flavor or nosing profile, if you will. First thing right off the bat is definitely the peat. Sort of brine notes coming in, slightly honey, but the sea salt, sea spray, that sort of thing. Sort of deep down in there, there is some raisin note going on there, some dried fruits. A little resiny in quality. One thing, and I said this last week, is that you don't get the big punch of the alcoholic burn. Now, at, what was this, 54.2%? Yeah. ABV, you would expect to take a good whiff of that and, you know, have it blow your head off, uh, so to speak. But you don't get that with this. It's you know, very well crafted, very finely aged, you can, you can sense. So let's go in for a taste. Now I'm just going to do the initial taste at the 54.2 and then I'm going to add water because I'm not going to pretend like that high of a proof of alcohol is great for getting all of the flavors out of it that you can. So much to say about it. so much going on. Yes, the traditional art bag sort of notes going on in it. Like I said, the brine sort of the peat definitely is there. This is rich in peat, but not overpowering at all. Honey is in there. Some dark spices in there. Some plum, a little bit of raisin. These coffee notes that are in there, and like I said, sort of resiny, sort of like furniture polish in there but balanced with the sherry. You can definitely taste this dark sherry in there. Sweet, flavorful, tangy. Good Lord Almighty. It's sort of like a really bright, really ripe apple note to it, some cherries going on in there. I mean, this has just got everything. This makes me want to go out and buy a bottle of this right now because, or buy it in bulk. I wish I could, you know, just thinking that this is going by the wayside once people figure out, and I'm sure as they already have, how brilliant of a whiskey this is. I mean, wow. Wow. And you know what? The thing is, is that you can get all of these flavors and aromas and that type of thing, even at this really high proof, which is just wonderful. But, like I said, we are going to add a little bit of water to see how things change. Now, I mentioned in my earlier reviews that it's best, you know, to give it some time, right? If you're trying to discern between different flavors and that sort of thing. You'll notice I'm being a little bit generous, more than usual that I am with it because it is such a high proof. But, you know, give it time. Who knows how long it's been aged for, but, you know, be gentle with it. You know, you don't want to go pour, pour a frickin' pitcher of water in, you know, to see how it goes. But, um, start to see, I'm trying to see if we get any of that, uh, the old scotch mist for me. Probably with a little bit more water, we'll start to see that. But you know, the non-chill filtering, it's definitely wonderful. You feel like you're getting the full experience that you possibly can. Um, I'm going to add just a, uh, just a splash more. Don't want to go crazy. There we 
a little bit more here. You gotta have your finger over the right hole there, folks, if you want it to work. There is a little bit confusing because they put two two little uh, circles on here, but only one of them's got the little uh, the the hole to place your finger over to you know trap the the water inside. But hey, it still works for what it is. You could also use a spoon, you know. Some basic tools you could I could just pour it in, but you know you try to be drop by drop. If you got something like like a 46 with the art bag 10, you know you want to be a little bit more subtle with the amount of water you drop. But with this, I doubt um, you know a sort of generous amount of water is going to do it really any harm. And yet you do start to get sort of the cloudiness in here. Um, tiny, tiny little particles sometimes floating around, so, you know, don't go and chuck, chuck the whiskey in the sink or what have you, but it's still good. Nothing is, nothing is tainted by seeing that, so. You know, what I'm getting now is sort of a really dull sort of smoke going on in here. Certainly the peat is still there, sort of a nuttiness, a little bit of uh, peppery spice going on in there. But def definitely an earthy uh, aroma to it. I know a lot of people, if you go and, and you look up the flavor profile of this, you get a lot of what people attribute to like these Christmassy notes so like christmas cake and freshly cut christmas tree now i'm getting more I'm, I'm sure a lot of people could get that in there but that's not initially what you know goes through my head and that's why i like to take tasting notes and stuff that i see with a grain of salt because it you know really depends on your own taste buds your own sense of smell that sort of thing things that you pick up it also has to do with things that you've smelt or experienced in the past that's going to influence what you smell you know if you've never smelt certain spices or, or say clove or something like that how are you expected to you know get that when you nose or taste a whiskey you know you really have to go out and search for those things if you want to be more and more discerning about what you could possibly experience with it but and I'm sure there's probably Christmas cake um, smells and taste to it, but I haven't had that before, so I wouldn't know. And I'm not going to pretend like, oh, I looked this up online, so this is what's in here. No, I'm just going to go by what I, I smell, and I feel that's more genuine than trying to recite to you what I saw on a, a website, which is just dumb. Why waste your time? So let's go in for a taste. Let's see what's changed. Still, even with the water that I put in, I still get a nice sort of spicy kick on the mouth. And one thing I didn't um, tell you about was the finish, which is sort of chewy in texture. Sort of chocolatey in there, but a more um, like a chalky type of, of chocolate. Not one that, you know, packs a real sweet punch, but it's sort of just subtle, you know. And so if you get if you get a glass of this, don't tell too many people you have it because they will be over at your house every week to try to get some of that. So make sure you hide it too. Put that on your lock and key. Mm. And definitely those sherry notes are in there. It'll be great, like I said in, in last week's review. Once we get done reviewing all three, or, or really, uh, next week, we'll film a sort of comparison between all three and just give you sort of my, you know, quick couple minute notes on, on each one and how they differ, how they're similar, and that sort of thing to each other. And that'll be really interesting. But I can't believe I went this long without knowing about... Hard bet. Like, I knew that it was obviously a distillery in Ireland, Scotland, but I was never that driven enough to go and search it out, you know, until you start looking around and gaining more knowledge, and you're like, 
you hear Art beg, and that's like, yeah, go for it, you know. You don't hear many people saying anything bad about it. So, let's go in, let's go in for a score. But man, these things are getting harder and harder to score when they're so good. Probably not the worst problem in the world. So, just because they were able to top what they had in the hard bag tenure by, you know, the maturation in, you know, the additional maturation in the sherry casks, going to give it a 98 out of 100. Now, maybe next week the choreographing will give a 99. And maybe if I find another expression like supernova, but that's extremely sort of out of my price range, but hey, if I get my hands on it, we'll definitely taste that. And maybe. That'll get a perfect score. You never know. And then at the end of the year, I'd like to do sort of a whiskey of the year. So if you have any thoughts or suggestions of whiskeys that you think that I should try, I know I've got a running list now of what people are looking for me to review, and I will be getting to those shortly after this mini series here. So be looking out for that. So for Straight Talk Whiskey, episode number 41. I'm Nick, as always. Thanks for tuning in. And, as always, if you're going to drink, drink responsibly, and we'll see you next week. Have a good one.